The lives of great men all remind us we should make our lives sublime and departing leave behind us footprints in the sands of time. Each and every one of us aspires to greatness and never more so than when we watch the lives of great men unfold before us. Indian cinema is following this creed with greater and greater regularity in the new millennium. We have with us today superstar, singer and director extraordinaire Farhan Akhtar. Born in Mumbai to screenwriters Javed Akhtar and Hani Irani, he grew up under the influence of the film industry. Akhtar made his directorial debut with the much acclaimed Dil Chata Hai. The film won a national award. In addition to commercial cinema, he has directed a short film, Positive, to spread awareness about HIV AIDS. Though an accomplished lyricist and actor, he is best known for his latest film, Bhag Milka Bhag. Prasoon Joshi, writer, poet and ad legend, straddles Myra Ed Worlds, one in his role as, role as chairman and CEO, McCann World Group India and executive creative director of the Asia Pacific. Add to which his avatar in the world of literature and music as an acclaimed writer. On one hand, he has been designated as a young global leader by the World Economic Forum and on the other, he has been confirmed the acclaimed national award twice by the President of India. The overlap of these fields gives Prasoon's work a distinct edge. He has judged and chaired many prestigious international and national award shows like Khan and also the acclaimed Dada Sahib Falke Puraskar. Rakesh Om Prakash Mehra is one of the most successful Indian filmmakers and screenwriters. He is best known for writing and directing Rangde Basanti, for which he won several awards and accolades at the national and international level. His recent directorial venture, Bhag Milkha Bhag, based on the popular Indian athlete, has been well appreciated among both masses and critics. Bhavna Somaya commenced her career in the late 70s as chief reporter with Free Press Journal's film weekly titled Cinema Journal, then moved to Super as special correspondent. Her involvement with Hindi cinema has all, not always been as a commentator. She is the recipient of several prestigious awards and has contributed columns to various publications like The Observer, The Afternoon, Janma Bhumi, Parvasi and The Hindu. Bhavna Somaya has been on the advisory panel of CBSC. She has to her credit nine books in a span of ten years, which include books on the legendary Amitabh Bachchan, Salam Bombay, Take 25 and many others. Talking cinema, everybody. Okay, this is all for your benefit. I know about uh, Rakesh Mehra and I know about Farhan Akhtar and I know about Prasun Joshi. I will interact with them on Bhag Milka Bhag and after that we will leave the house open for you guys to uh, uh, ask questions and they will answer. Okay? <clears throat> Today's discussion is on biopics and uh, since I have written two biographies myself, I know that it is a very uphill task to write a biography because it's not just about uh, writing to your satisfaction but it's also about your subject being happy with what you have written. And when you make a biopic, it becomes all the more difficult. So I'm always interested to know how the concept came about. I'm always interested to know how the film was thought out. Did the chicken come first or did the egg come first? Did he write it first? Did you ask him to write? Take a This question is for Rakesh Mehra, the director of the film. Uh, uh, I, I think on the onset, lovely to be here. Uh, what a lovely afternoon. Um, thank you, Bangalore. Uh, Thank you, what a lovely event. Uh, uh, the most important thing is there's not a single sponsor logo out here. So it's all been done with passion and belief. And I must say, uh, with a lot of madness and, and uh, lovely. So uh, uh, Bhavna asks, uh, chicken and egg, biopic, uh, on the onset, the film Bhag Milka Bhag is not a true blue biopic. Uh, it's inspired by life 
and uh, is inspired by a true life of Milka Singh. Um, Milka Singh and Dara Singh were two names we grew up with, at least my generation. And he really inspired us, though we didn't know the full story as such. And later when you find yourself in the director's chair, you're always looking for subjects and what to make next becomes a, a very real question all the time. So, uh, we chanced upon a, uh, an autobiography in Gurmukhi of Milka Singh, which one did not understand because one doesn't know Gurmukhi. But leaf through the pages and I saw some wonderful photographs which took me down the memory lane. Him as an athlete, him with uh, Jawaharlal Nehru, with General Vora, all over the world in Commonwealth Games, in Tokyo, Rome Olympics. So that somewhere uh, what, was, what had, was planted in you as a child immediately came out and wanted to know more. So uh, took a flight, met him, and then something connected. I, at that point of time, I really don't know what connected. It was difficult to put a finger then. It was all very exciting. But uh, as the story got developed and Prasunji started writing it and we kept meeting him more and more, I found the answer. It One was, minute. It was the partition of India. And it was a huge historical moment, a dark moment. And Milka Singh is one like many children who had a lost childhood. And so the film begins when Milka Singh runs in Rome and he looks back and he sees a tortured childhood. And the film ends. Now this time he is running in Lahore in the same land where he lost everything where he refused to go, he refused the Prime Minister of India, Jawaharlal Nehru, that I'll not go to Pakistan. And this is true. And this time when he looks, he sees a smiling childhood. And deep down one understood, this is a story about not only inspiring, inspiration, triumph of the human spirit, but somewhere deep down it was about healing. And I think, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not very good with words, I connect with feelings and try to translate them into pictures. So that's where the connection happened. And that's where it begins. So I don't know what was chicken, what was egg. <laughs> what I meant was that you read the book and you thought that uh, you want to make a biopic and that's why you went to meet him? or uh... Uh, No, not exactly. It's exactly what I just said. Okay. And then, in, in fact, uh, Prasun guided me. I had a couple of subjects at that point. You're always on the crossroad whether to make this, that, and we keep talking. And Prasun said, uh, actually you should hear it from Prasun, but he, he said, no Rakesh, I think uh, this one, there's a DNA match. And uh, I think what he meant was, I don't remember what he really said, it was a long time back, what he really meant, I think, and uh, we need very little to discuss between us, he meant was the, the Milka Singh inside us is connecting to. So we were trying to find a Milka Singh inside us and thereby translate that to find a Milka Singh in all of you. That, that spirit. So it's not really a biopic. It doesn't tell you he was born here and he went to this school, this college. The, that was the name of his mother, father, this, all that. So it's more of an interpretation. From yeah. Prasun. Prasun, uh, Rakesh Mehra just described it as a, a film more about healing and finding a Milka Singh inside you. How do you perceive it? How did you come into the project? What were your initial feelings? What did you feel after meeting Milka and the entire process of writing the film with Rakesh? So, uh, um Rakesh has already told you how <clears throat> the, the fact that uh, there was a keenness in Milka Singh Ji also to be 
able to be captured on the celluloid. Um, he was interested that a film is, should be made on him. And uh, he was approached by uh, other uh, producers and directors and in, uh, in, the, in, the, in his head he probably had something to, to, to share with the whole world. And, and one becomes an instrument of that. So it came my way and I started writing it. I feel uh, why you do it, you know, you retrospectively you go back and you say, why did you give your two and a half years to a project like this? Um, a project when there was no sign who's going to come and make this film. There was no sign of any financial gains from it. It was uh, purely a, a kind of a meeting of minds. Uh, Rakesh and me had worked earlier. So just purely on the gut that there is something one should venture out. And he said, would you write it? I said, yes, I will write it. But I'll have to meet this gentleman. Because, you know, unlike him who has uh, been brought up on Dara Singh and uh, Milka Singh, I was brought up more on Galibs and Premchand. So for me, sportsmen were very distant reality, frankly. I was, uh, I, would, I would hear about them and, and you would know in news and all that, but you would not follow their career so much. Uh, for me, Dara Singh was more of a film actor than, than uh, you know, Kushti as a sport. I didn't know much about it. For me, what I connected with probably was a struggle. That there is something in this human being which, and I, I had to made it very clear that I can probably not chronicle sport. I'm not the right man to chronicle sport. But I can write a human story. I can, I would like to examine his human side, his psychological side. To give you an example, why he turned back, why he looks back. The whole world has been asking him why he turned back. For me, what if your atit, your mazi, your past called you? Aisa hota nahi hai ki aapka past aapko pukarta hai. Ek interpretational, as Rakesh ji rightly said, it's an interpretational thing. That what if your past was calling you? What if something was going on in your head? Of course nothing was. He, he looked back to see where he, how far he has come. That's what he has said on record. But to write a story, you have to get into the psychological. I think uh, you have to be a kind of a psychoanalyst. So I started sort of enjoying that whole process, is asking him about his life, about his sister, about his brother, who we, we haven't talked about in the film, but was a very important part of his life. So uh, exploring these characters, saying, OK, fine, these are the characters one will develop. So clearly. Saying that this is a biopic, yes, it's inspired from life. Yes, if there was no skeleton of his life, I don't think I would have got, I would have started writing this. I wouldn't have got the, the caveat, the, I wouldn't have got the inspiration to start with. So his life first has to inspire me or him and finally him. I mean, no matter how I write, what characters I build, this man has to bring it alive on, this, on the screen. So it has to work together. It has to, all of us have to feel inspired before we can inspire other people. So I think it's a it's it, it's been a journey which uh, you know I don't know where uh, you know um, the reality began or where that you know you started adding your own imagination into it. Whether because my hero could sing, my hero could dance, my hero was compassionate, my hero was everything, and 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 which a human being should be, and which is inspired from a man, but it gets into a, a character you, you love and you want people to love. And as a result, I think it's a unique writing process, I would say. It's a very unique writing process. I had never done something like this before. It is also your first script. Yes. So that makes it even more special. Yeah, it, it, it just makes it a lot more special because, you know, I had written songs. Of course, you've heard my songs earlier. And one had written dialogues also in Rangde Basanti, I wrote. But, you know, being part of it is a different thing. When you are writing the whole thing, you are just into it, you are immersed in it, you are discussing it. I mean, Rakesh, you know, I was discussing a lot, I was talking a lot. As I said, I also come from, I was born in Uttarakhand. In, 
Gadwal, is brought up there. When I came to Bombay, I was a very small water stream, which was trying to, you know, flow next to the big ocean. And I was also trying to find my voice. So somewhere I can identify with struggle. I'm not saying I had seen a, a kind of a struggle which Milka Singh Ji had seen. But definitely a, a sort of a stream of struggle which I could see. And I could see how it feels when you sort of make it against odds. Came into the advertising world. I'm telling you there, like people from, oh, a small town boy, you know, sitting in a corner. We did not have that privilege. And so without knowing anyone in advertising or film world, I could identify with the kind of coming from nowhere struggle. And probably that would have reflected somewhere in, in this subconsciously. I have to... Farhan. Now, Bhag Milka... If you all have finished with the whistles, can I ask him a question? Thank you. This is a role of a lifetime. But it is also an all-consuming character that you can't just play easily. It is very, very demanding. Um, you had to give it a lot of time emotionally, physically, and completely be absorbed. And not for a short time, but for a long time. Were there any apprehensions? Was there any fear about whether you'll be able to do it, how you'll be able to do it? It's a difficult role. Uh, yes, it is. Um, hello, everyone. And uh, a big hello to everyone sitting back there. Hello. Um, there, were, there were no apprehensions, Bhavna, about doing this part. Um, when Rakesh told me the story, there was something that just clicked. You know, and uh, eventually, whether you're writing, whether you're directing, whether you're acting, no matter what field of endeavor you're in, um, eventually the thing that you rely most on is your instinct. And that tells you whether it's the right thing to do or not. So if you're going to succeed, you might as well succeed on instinct. If you're going to fail, you have only yourself to blame. You know, so um, it just felt like um, a story that needed to be told. It was a very powerful story. They've spoken about it. I won't repeat that. But uh, it, it just felt like a story that was a very powerful story, a story that needed to be told, a story that one would feel proud to be associated with. And like you say, it, uh, a role of a lifetime, I completely agree. And it's taken um, somebody's lifetime to create this role, you know, as well. So you understand the gravitas that there is attached to uh, this character. You understand what it is that the director, the writer, the, the person himself, that's Milkaji, are trying to convey through this movie. Um, and then when all of that feels like the right thing, then there is no question of what is difficult and what is easy. Everything feels like it's the, the thing that should be done for the part. So yes, of course, physically it was very demanding. Emotionally it was very demanding. Uh, you required a lot of determination, will to see it through because there were many sacrifices that needed to be made to play it. But all of it felt that it's for a very good reason. Um, and that really sustained me through the entire process of making this movie. I would be very curious to know how exactly you worked out your schedule at that time, how many hours you were running, no, what you were eating, uh, well, how mean, did that, you shut off yourself from the yeah, rest I mean, of all the world? The, the 24 hour breakdown is too boring to share really. Uh, briefly. With everyone. But, uh, no, but uh, all, it was just a sole commitment to this movie and nothing else. So from the time that from the time that we started preparing for this movie, <coughs> excuse me, which was um, in September of 2011, is when I got into preparation. We finished shooting this film January or December 2012 or uh, January 2013. Somewhere there is when we finished shooting it. Um, so till that period, I did not take on any other work. Um, I, I didn't listen to anybody else's scripts. It was just living this life. Um, and for me, it was very crucial to live the disciplined life that Milkaji um, lived when he was an athlete because that would then mentally and emotionally put me into the zone of what it's like to be that person. You cannot pretend to be a dancer. You know, you cannot pretend to be a singer 
and not sing. Similarly, you cannot pretend to be an athlete but not be an athlete. You know, so... So for that reason, there was a lot of work that went into just creating not the, again, the, the physical look is a manifestation, it's just the physical manifestation of what that lifestyle is. But it makes you so strong mentally and it makes you feel invincible, it makes you feel that anything is possible to be done. So when you walk out, whether it's into a scene, whether you walk out onto the track, where there's uh, athletes who've come from all across the world, who time 10 seconds in 100 meters and are really going to be seen in the Olympics very, very soon. And you have to run against them. You don't even want for one second, I didn't want, for them for even one second to think that this man is an actor and he's not an athlete. It was very crucial that you recognize the respect for another athlete in their body language. They're not actors. You know, so for that, when we ran, it was important for them to be impressed by it. It was important for them to feel, oh my God, we're really going to have to push. So all of that played a very, very strong part in, in being this character. It's very uh, interesting observation. And uh, it's also very interesting that how uh, Bhag Milka Bhag uh, is interpreted by different people differently. Like Rakesh called it healing, he called it something else. Farhan called it something else. And when you said that Mazi Pukarta Nahi Hai, or looking back to the past, for me, it's about uh, not getting distracted at the most important point in your life and about complete focus. And if you lose that focus, then you lose so many things. Uh, my favorite scene in the film, um, and um, I have to tell you that uh, when Farhan called me for the screening and he said, would you like to come? So I said, I will run like Bhag Milka and come for the screening. And... Um, I found my favorite seat and uh, Farhan was sitting way behind. I, I, I told Bhavna, I said, Bhavna, I've seen you run, you probably missed the first half. <laughs> Farhan and I have a standing joke. Uh, he's the only old man in this universe who calls me youngster. <laughs> so, uh, Farhan was sitting in the back seat and suddenly I realized that he came and sat next to me. And I said, oh my God, now this actor sitting next to me, I will not be able to breathe, I will not be able to enjoy the film, I will have to control my expression and emotion because obviously he's going to be a little anxious about his film. But the film started and I was crying throughout. In the interval, when I asked for my coffee, that guy who had to offer me the coffee thought that probably something had happened to me. And when the film ended, he was surrounded by everybody who was complimenting him. I just left. When I finally spoke to him, I said, I am not going to tell you what I feel because anything I say is going to seem artificial to what I'm feeling in my heart. And I will see what I want to write, but I don't want to speak to you. I sent a message to Prasun. I sent a text message to Rakesh, who was traveling to New York. And he sent me a very sweet message when he said that, this is the first feedback I'm getting and I'm in New York and I'm suddenly feeling good. So, my favorite scene in the film, which I, it's been so many weeks, the film is over, but it somehow doesn't leave my uh, psyche, is uh, when uh, he's wearing the jacket, Milka Singh, and he's wearing his glares and he comes to his sister's home and she's cleaning the utensil. And when the scene starts unfolding, you know, you are feeling so emotional, but you don't know to what extent they are going to take you. So, uh, Divya that doesn't recognize him, then she, give, he, she recognizes, uh, the hero offers him the jack, her the jacket, she wears the jacket and he says, put your hands in the pocket and oh my God, you are weeping like you never wept. So... Um, is there anything you all want to add to it before we take questions? Because we can go on talking about it. But I think that they are so hungry and dying to interact with the panel. I should not be so selfish to take so much time. So, so one thing I'll add here. Sure. See, when you were talking about, and I think one people should know that where, where you say imagination begins. This is purely an imaginative scene. This is not exactly how a reality happened. Never happened. This scene never happened. But when you were asking where you call it biopic and where to not call it biopic. This is an example of that. 
that you have internalized him so much that even if a scene like this is written, it reflects as if this is how it should have happened and it should go. So I think that's why the reality and, uh, and, re uh, and fictional somewhere gets mixed and you are reflecting the uh, truth of somebody's life and you are creating scenes which if happened would happen like this. So what do you call it? Do you call it art or do you call it uh, you know, uh, a documentary? What is it? You are creating cinema and in that you have to create such moments and probably uh, we would have internalized him so much that that line never got sort of drawn. In that very, sense. very well articulated. Rakesh, you want to say something about some particular moment that yeah, we missed? It's a, it's, a, it's a lovely scene and uh, I, since you're sharing about the scene, uh, I, I must share something. We uh, shot the scene uh, in a real location. It was four and a half feet wide and what you see in the film around eight to ten feet long. It was a backyard of a fourth grade railway uh, worker. And in that, Binod Pradhan managed uh, everything. And it's, it's a lovely scene and I must, uh, when, when Prasun wrote the scene itself, I had tears in my eyes already. And that became the raw material for me to go on the, to say, let's play it completely real. I still remember, I'm from Delhi, I shifted to Mumbai. And uh, for, and I used to, we were all struggling, we all struggle in our lives. So I used to go back to Delhi once in a while, at times after two, three years. And I used to land up there without telling my mother. So while she was cooking, I used to just go and stand there. So when I told this to Binod, he said, let's play it like that. So that, what he gave me became the raw material for me. What I gave Farhan and Divya became a raw material for them. So the, the beauty in filmmaking is, and this is what I've learned from Guzar Bhai, the raw material thing. <laughs> and he keeps, uh, he's among us today <laughs> and we can't miss them. Miss him, he, he shines. <laughs> and uh, so, and what Farhan and Divya got was again a raw material, nothing finished. And where they took it to, so everybody interprets. It's, it's, a, it's a wonderful medium, it's a fantastic medium. Because what you get from the writer, you give it to the cameraman, you give it to the production designer, you give it to the wardrobe uh, uh, designer, you give it to the visual effects supervisor, you give it to the art director, uh, and uh, you know, you, you, you give it to the dialogue supervisors, you give it to the sound guy, they are all there around you. There are 200 people all over and these two actors are in between there. And then they take all this in and they reinterpret it. And you're surprised and uh, you're so right because while it was happening in front of the camera, behind the camera I was not the director, I was a spectator because I had tears in my eyes. Yeah. Before I uh, ask the audience to uh, get into an interactive mode, Farhan, this question I have to ask you because you are perhaps the only one who is... Uh, an actor who is a singer, who is a writer, and who is a director. So, besides making your own films like Dil Chata Hai, Dawn, you submit yourself to your director, whether it was Luck by Chance, or uh, it was uh, Rock On, and now to uh, Bhag Mil Ka Bhag. How difficult it is when you have been behind the camera yourself to uh, completely surrender. Both, actually you and uh, Rakesh should be answering this. Is it, are you in your mind re-editing a scene or something? No, you know, I, I think if you know enough about filmmaking, um, and I was an assistant before I wrote Dil Chata and directed it, you realize that it is a collaborative art form. You cannot work in isolation. And no one can work and say, it's my film. Eventually, the film belongs to everyone who worked on it. Whether they worked on one scene or whether they worked on the entire film, it belongs to everyone. 
and every single person who collaborates has a right to ask questions has a right to say, offer suggestions um it's up to the director to decide because he has or she has the larger overview on what they'd like for in terms of the emotional graph the the emotional pitch how they want scenes to flow the pair the, the pace of the of the movie but everyone can offer suggestions so as long as you're comfortable with that so whether you're directing whether you're acting um it's exactly the same thing you know so it it communication is key if i don't know what rakesh wants or if sharuk doesn't know what i want or if i don't know what sharuk wants to do or if he doesn't know what i want to do there's going to be some serious confusion in that scene when you eventually watch it so it's important that all of us speak and we all agree with each other and uh, feel good about what we're doing would you like to say because this is how he interpreted it yeah it's a uh, very very simply put we are uh, um, all doing a jobs that we have chosen to do so it was a choice he made so while a writer writes actor acts the director directs and the singer sings so i don't start singing certainly and she doesn't start act- directing and uh, because this movies are not homogeneous you know you are not making cars k cat cam ban gaya model ban gaya and now let's make 10 lakh cars oh they are really selling let's sell them all over the world movies are very unique you are de- they are written with emotions uh then you are dealing with individuals like i told you there is cameraman there and so many departments there and then there are actors there so you are dealing with human beings and their emotions and their interpretations and how they they are that day what's their energy level what's their mood how positive negative they are so that's you 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 have to become the author of the job by taking all that and ensuring that we are all making the same film basically and then all this happen it lands up in the in the on the editor's table and she goes and completely rewrites it to differently then you have to take her along as such and uh, and try and ensure that again we are making the same film so every individual because they are human beings they are not machines they have not been trained to churn out the same thing again and again the second time they do it is different i'm not saying it's better good or what so second time i asked farhan can we shall we do this scene this shot again he says okay if you think so and i call action and he does it totally differently and in my head i'm thinking maybe he oh he's surprised me this time so it's everyone just bringing and that's why it's so beautiful it's such an amazing process it keeps you alive all the time there is not a moment uh of uh a a dead moment if i may call it not not a single ek shan bhi nahi hai udhar in the whole process from writing to editing to releasing and and then the beauty is once the film releases it goes out to all of us and bit by bit ticket by ticket 100 bucks at a time you make it your own and to all of you then the film means something different to yourself you know how you relate to it and and that's the beauty of cinema and 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 that's why they call it a modern day art form and yeah very very well nicely sir Rakesh Mehra just explained that how there is not a dead moment and how every single moment leads to something special and then the film releases in the theater and then the film becomes special to us now you have to prove it that you all are going to make your question answer special for the panel and ask all the intelligent questions yes go ahead are we uh, running the mics everywhere who's doing it First of all uh, my question is from you Farhan sir I'm a huge fan of yours since you made a film like Lakshya and uh, thank uh, you yeah 
here and uh, I would like to thank you for giving us a film like Bhag Milka Bhag. It was such a huge inspiration and I was literally crying in, the, in that scene when you were lost in the memories of your parents in Pakistan. So uh, my question, my only question is after such kind of inspiration, what kind of inspiration should we expect from your next movie titled Shadi Ke Side Effects? <laughs> See, you didn't, you didn't ask me this question before Bhag Milka Bhag. <laughs> so now I leave this joy of discovery of Shadi Ke side effects also for you when you watch the film. But uh, thank you for following my work so closely. <laughs> and, and you should also say thank you to them. They are equally responsible for making Bhag Milka Bhag, not just me. And we have Shadi Ke side effect. We all married. Um, hi. Good afternoon to the pan panel. I have a very simple question. Uh, since the topic is about biopics, um, if you look at some of the movies made in the West, they don't take their celebrities so seriously. There's some amount of humor. There's some amount of humanizing a celebrity. Uh, why is it uh, so restricted or so limited in our cinema? Why do we make everyone a demigod whom do you want to, uh, I, want to I guess uh, i don't know uh, why you saying that because uh, i think the, the there are various films which we have uh, yes there are gods and demigods i think if you are making a film on a mythological character you you'll see a god but uh, when we talk about our leaders and we talk about, uh, you know, um, a sportsman, I, I don't know, many films have been done. But yes, there is some amount of heroism there about them. That's what attracts us towards them. There is something extraordinary in these people's endeavor. That's what attracts us towards them. So, uh, yes, but there have been stories about, uh, I think, um, Shobha Deji, she's here. She, I, mean, I was just, she has, she has uh, I'm just talking to her a while back and uh, we were talking about the fact that loss of, uh, you know, uh, Milka Singh Ji, when he goes to Rome and why couldn't you end the film on loss? Probably the nature of our country, we, we want to, but, and, and also the way we started our project. Do, did we start a project to end it uh, on, a, on a note uh, that this man's life finished like that and we should show it like that? No. When I started writing this, I wanted to feel inspired and inspire. For that, if I have to end the film in a certain way, I'll do that. If I have to take those things about that person, well, he's an 80 year old man, more than 80 year old. There, may, um, there could be various things about him we, we haven't shown in his life, which probably would make his character very different. But here, one was interested in his struggle and how he conquers against odds and that's what one was showing so that if reflects him as a uh, you know a hero and we uh, you see if we we were almost geologizing him and falling in love with him yes we accept it at least i was in love with him i was doing a kind of geology sorry i'd like to add to that as well um, the thing is that also this is genuinely on some level, this is a film about Milkaji. This is heroes emerge from our society. They don't really fall out from the sky. Um, and there is this aspect of his life where he is able to let go of something that was holding him back, something that was his major grievance in life, something that he was always complexed about. So to face that fear, to live up to that fear and to move on from it, is something that is equally heroic. Um, and this focuses on that aspect of his life. There are many other aspects in his life. And like you're saying in the West, um, there are biopics and there are stories made about characters. And there doesn't necessarily have to be only one film about that person. There could be another film made on Milkhaji, which could be talking about how the sports fraternity, how fans treated somebody like him after he had won 77 gold medals for them. And when he lost one race, they all forgot about him. That's, a, that's another story. 
this is not that story. But the fact is that that story can be made. It's a very interesting story. But this film chose to focus on the fact that here is a man who has all the reason in the world to hold a very serious grudge against a country, against a people, against his past, but then finds the courage and finds the strength to face up to it, to deal with it, and that's what gives him wings to fly and calls him, and that's how he gets the title of the Flying Sikh. Also, because uh, today we are discussing biopics and biographies and why filmmakers get inspired to make uh, films on uh, biographies, I would like to say, because I've done two biographies on movie actors, it is very easy for everybody to say, but you did not uh, focus on that aspect of the particular actor or the heroine. It is my book and I will decide what I want to highlight and what I want to avoid. If you are having so many opinions, then you make the book or the film. This is I have nothing to add. This is to Mr. Mehra. I'm Lakshmi. Where are you, Lakshmi? I'm here. here. Hey. Two questions. Uh, I recently came across a magazine with, which had you and Farhan as top directors of uh, the Bollywood film industry. Um, and now he's proved himself as a fantastic actor in Bhag Milka Bhag. In your opinion, what do you think he should pursue from here on? And what do you think he's better at, being a director or being an actor? <laughs> My second question. Why did you choose him to do Bag Milka Bag when there were so many others who wanted to do it? Uh, in, in all uh, uh, humbleness, your first question should be answered by Farhan. I, I wouldn't mind yeah. at all. <laughs> and uh, your second question, uh, if you would have asked me this uh, two years ago, yeah, I, 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 I would have had uh, certain reasons and I, I would have spoken differently. Um, why you approach an actor and why I approach Farhan, uh, it's, there's something called the director's instinct. Why you do things, why you call a shot, why you go to a person. There is no science to it. It's extremely illogical, at least in my case. Uh, uh, Farhan, I had even approached him six years ago for Rangde Basanti. There is something about him, I can't explain. Uh, it's a natural ease, it's his eyes, is how, what I feel. Uh, is, uh, so, it took me to him and it's my, it's my instincts. Uh, in retrospect, I, I would imagine you'll ask a question saying, if you wouldn't have gone to Farhan, I would have killed you. <laughs> Farhan, would you answer that? Would you, be, uh, would you prefer acting or directing? I, mean, I, I, I genuinely enjoy both. So I, I can't answer that question. And dancing, he's a very good dancer. Nobody knows that as yet. And I take very long naps. <laughs> Hello, Farhan. Hi. Faruk here. My question to you is, you have always been a trendsetter, be it with Dil Chata Hai, or with Bhag Milka Bhag, or anything that you have done, be it directing, acting, anything. And recently, your initiative for Mad. What is that push that is, like, makes you do all these trendsetting things? Uh... I, I don't know. I, I don't know if I can give you a very logical answer for it. I'm extremely restless. I think that's the only way that I can describe it. I don't like being in the same place for too long. Um, I hate repeating myself. Um, so even with the films that I direct or the films that I choose to act in, more often than not, I, I hope that it will be something that's going to constantly keep making me experience new things or... Uh, tackle new genres um, and that applies in life as well you know so um, I mean the Mard initiative is, is, is a very very different thing that comes from a very serious concern from a very serious social concern 
um, and I share that with many people. I'm not alone in those worries. Um, and I am very thankful. I've been here once before. I've discussed that on a concert that we had done here. And I'm very, very thankful that uh, people from, from uh, Bangalore have been extremely supportive of the initiative on, on the social media especially. So thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, hello, Farhan. Uh, panel of judges here. Uh, Rakesh ji, thank you very much for uh, incorporating the song uh, Havan Kund. Uh, a lot of uh, people like me have grown up uh, for almost three years in a lot of academies where uh, we have sung that song and we have... No, no, have, have, you, have you sung it like this? No, <laughs> that's a different <laughs> version which we sing. <laughs> anyway, thanks a lot for uh, putting the song in the film. Also, uh, uh, my question to uh, both the directors is, how do you uh, take on the challenge to make a movie with something related to the Defence Forces? Is, how is the challenge and what all are the preparations you do before going into making such films? You, you uh, always have uh, uh, like a secondary idea of anything you do in life, especially when uh, you're making a movie, and uh, which is called uh, the acquired intelligence and the perceptive in intelligence. But I would uh, suggest uh, the best route is to go for primary stuff. That is, you yourself understand inside out, and then you'll be able to portray that on the screen. Uh, some people call it research. I, I, I would rather call it uh, like living your dream. So if you're dreaming of something, then first live it so you can recreate it. Hello, everyone. Hello, sir. I'm here. So, so my question is to all of you. First of all, I want to thank you for making such a beautiful film. Such a beautiful film uh, since a very long time. My question uh, goes to all of you and especially to Farhan. Like you have, you are doing such a, uh, such a historical role uh, which demands so much. I want, to ask you, I want to ask you, what does it does to you in life? What does uh, it do, does to you spiritually? What does it, uh, how does it uplift you? As you have given uh, two years of your life to that particular role. Thank you. Um. I, I don't know about spiritual upliftment, to be honest. Um, what I can say is that at the end of it all, when, and more, I mean, of course, there is an audience appreciation. There is an appreciation that happens critically. There's an appreciation that happens commercially at the box office. And then there is also the appreciation that you get from people within your fraternity whose opinion you really respect. Um, so when that can happen on, on a film, um, it doesn't happen all the time that you get this kind of appreciation from all quarters. So you've obviously done something right when it does happen. So to appreciate that, to enjoy it, to be grateful for it, to understand why it happened, uh, which is how much more did you give to this part maybe than you gave to something else before, um, to understand that and to take inspiration from it. I think that's the most crucial thing is what you can do. Um, and move on, you know, so... Um, this has happened, it's been a wonderful experience, I think, for everybody involved. But I think we, we should take inspiration from it that we all worked very hard. And if we can work hard like this again, then hopefully the results will be like this again. So just to look for that moment of inspiration, get inspired, and then give it, give it your best. That's all I've really taken, honestly, from, from this film. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hello. Yeah, I'll, I'll just add uh, something uh, to that. Uh, a very dear friend of ours, and uh, you, you all know him by the name of A.R. Rahman. So, uh, A.R. once told me, you know, uh, getting from 0 to 90 percent takes everything out of you. To go to 91 percent, you have to go from, again start from 0, it's not 90 to 91. So it's 0 to 91 again, and 91 to 92 is not a 1% leap. You again have to start from 0 and put as much effort to go there. So I still remember a journalist sending a message saying you'll never better Rang De Basanti. And that was like, I felt very good about it. And then I realized I should not be feeling very good about it. <laughs> and then Rahman's words came back to me. 
And on top of that, such an inspiring subject of Milka Singh happened. And I kept repeating that as a mantra every day in the morning, that there is nothing, you just have to keep working hard and harder and harder to just grow. It's not necessary you'll do better or worse, whether you'll succeed or fail. And uh, we've just started a next movie, and uh, which Gulzar Saab is writing. And in our first sitting with the music directors, the, f the only thing I heard myself say was, let's give all ourselves permission to fail on this one. Wow. So let's go with that, that we'll all fail, and let's give it our best. So maybe if that makes sense, yeah. Uh, Prasun, I would like to ask you a question that somebody just asked Farhan, that do you like to direct or do you like to act? Do you like to write just songs or do, would you like to write screenplays? And after Prasun's answer, we are going to take the last five questions. Thank you. You know, I, uh, I do also advertising and uh, many other things. I compose also music. I, I do not know why you do certain things. You uh, have a desire, I think people who do many things will be able to understand what I am saying, that there is a, there is a desire to uh, sort of share or uh, share a thought in a certain way. Sometimes you have to sing it. Uh, when I write a, a song like Bhag Milka, the title song, you feel that that's the form, poetry, can do justice to ki daat se kaat le bijli tar, chaba le tambe ki jhankar, phook de khud ko jwala jwala, bin khud jale na hoye ho jala, lapat hai aag milkha, ab tu bhaag milkha. It requires poetry. This expression in me requires poetry as a form to express. Every time you have a thought occurring in you, you do not know why you write. Why did I write a film uh, like Bhag Milka? Or tomorrow I'll write another film like this. Or tomorrow uh, I probably would... I composed a song for Arakshan. I don't know how many of you heard because it was Chandul Pandit Chalu Lal Mishra sang it. Um, that was, uh, you know, uh, my first composition. I felt like doing it. I felt like expressing myself like so I think people who probably can do various forms will understand that, you know, sometimes jo aapke andar umad ghumad raha hai, usko abhivyakt karne ke liye, shayad ek wahi madhyam bachta hai aur usi se aap kaam chalate hai. Hello. Uh, okay. uh, Rakesh sir, you said something about healing and particularly in relation to uh, Milka's childhood. Well, I'd just like to tell you that I have actually come from Lahore and it gives me great joy and hope to hear that word. Um, my question is to uh, Can I Par Paranji. My question? <laughs> Sorry. Um, and also I'd like to uh, assure you that an overwhelming majority on, of people on that side of the border feel the same way. They want healing desperately. Chale chalo ke wo manzil abhi nahi aai, lekin aane wali hai, inshallah. My question is, um, do you think, just two quick questions, do you think that films actually do provide a form of mass catharsis? And secondly, to, to the end of um, what I was saying earlier, uh, do you think there's any possibilities of collaborations with uh, cinema practitioners from Pakistan? Uh See, this, uh, this whole thing of uh, uh, the division is, is a geographic... Somebody just got up one day and drew a line where there was no line. So, uh, emotionally, I think we are not divided in the true sense. We might like to think it has been fed into us, the whole hatred of it. But I, for a moment, I have never felt as a divided land. And I have told myself that time and again. And even if it's partly wrong, I don't care. So I don't feel divided at all, as such. So this, this whole uh, uh, line of hatred, 
we need to take an eraser of love and maybe erase it bit by bit. This is might sound poetic or rhetoric, but that's uh, through the whole cultural thing, through the whole human bridge. It's the only way to bridge it. There cannot be a political bridge as such. Because uh, that's one. In terms of collaboration, you'll be happy to know Bhag Milka Bhag, the title song is sung by Arif Lohar. Uh, two songs, Rangrez and Mera Yar is sung by Javed Bashir. And when I called Misha Safi to just play a guest appearance, uh, uh, she, she, she consented without any, um, uh, without any conditions, without talking. And then uh, Milka Singh's father has been played by Art Malik. And I still remember uh, one day before the shoot, he was not getting the visa because he has a Pakistani... Uh, he's Pakistani, now settled in London, so it went to the INB ministry. So I picked up the phone and I spoke to the Home Minister from Punjab. And I said, sir, he has to come and this is the background of the film. And the Home Minister understood it. He understood the whole thing. And he made it happen, out of turn and everything. So, the, the bridge, the onus of building the bridge lies with us, lies with the people. We cannot leave it to the politicians. Very good question. Um, my question is to Farhan. Uh, I, I know your dad's a brilliant poet and uh, I, I like his work. Do you write too? Yes. Um, what do you get inspired by? Um, by, by things around me, uh, by what I'm feeling at certain times. It, weirdly enough, I must share one story with you. Uh, when I first read something that I had written to my father, so he asked me, were you feeling very low when you wrote this? So I said, yeah, I was extremely low. So he said, it's such a coincidence that even I can only write when I'm feeling low, I can never write when I'm happy. <laughs> so um, I, I do write. Fortunately, I've not been low for a while. So, <laughs> so but, but the next time, I'm, I guess I will again. Yeah. Thank you. You're most welcome. Anjali. Uh, Hanji, uh, welcome to Bangalore. Uh, sorry to uh, sound a negative note. I think the uh, song and dance in your film detracts from the story rather than enhancing it. Uh, it seemed very much out of context with the tone and uh, content of the film. So firstly, your comments on that. Secondly, do you think a day will come when countless... Uh, Contextless uh, song and dance, particularly item, uh, item numbers, can be a thing of the past as they do nothing for plot and character development. I mean, the, the, the lunchbox has uh, taken the brave step and it's better for it. So uh, first, uh, Nach Gana in your own film and then the uh, rest of it. Otherwise, the movie was great. Shukriya. Thank you. <coughs> I, I think we must definitely send him an edited DVD without the songs. But um, firstly, a couple of, couple of things, I think. Firstly, um, The Lunchbox, as beautiful a film as it is, it's not the first film that's a songless film. There's many films made in the past that are equally as beautiful. Uh, secondly, when we spoke to Milka Ji, Milka Ji, in fact, mentioned to us that he used to love singing and he used to love dancing. And whenever there was a, a camp celebration, a bonfire celebration, whenever he went to a party, he used to like to be the center of attention and he used to dance till he dropped. Now, this is an aspect of his personality. This is an aspect of who he is. And if you see the songs in the film, which are actually the sung songs in the film, they come in extremely organically into this movie. They are not forced at all. They come when he's celebrating with his friends in the army cantonment, which he used to. And they come at a time when he goes for the athlete's welcoming party in Melbourne, which is something that he did go to and he did dance. Um, we unfortunately probably couldn't use the songs that he sang there because there are copyright clearances and there are many issues right now going on with copyright. <laughs> but um, but I, I don't agree with you vis-a-vis <clears throat> -vis this film. I, I do think that yes, that there are many films and I, I too can say that I'm guilty of a few films in which there are songs that may be relatively out of context, but this is not one of those films, so I, I must defend this one.
Also, I think when you make your film, please don't keep a song in that film. But we love songs in our country. And we'll keep doing it irrespective. Yeah. Uh, we have the last question Can I, uh, I completely agree with you. We should, I completely agree with you and we, we cannot have uh, a police inspector and a gangster uh, start singing and gyrating. <laughs> Impossible. Uh, however, our, the our movies grew out of folk theatre and Parsi theatre in the 40s. So that form kind of spilled over into cinema as such. The, the whole narrative of a musical. When you have a tool in your hand, it's like bandar ke hath mein us tarah de dete na. So you can use it wrongly or rightly. It's a double-edged sword. So songs have been used beautifully and they have been misused and abused also. And quite lately maybe there are more examples of the latter. So yes, if, if, and it's entirely your choice and as cinema and things will evolve, we'll have uh, maybe more genre specific uh, stuff, which will be more like musicals and more like non-musicals, if they're addressing a very serious issue. So all this evolves as a society evolves. We've just come out of folk theatres 40, 50 years ago or 30 years ago. Lavni is still being seen in Dadar and all over Maharashtra. So our, 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 the way our festivals are organized in Holi, Diwali and Onam and Pongal and it, it all happens. So I'm not saying it's the right direction but it will always reflect a collective consciousness of the masses. And it is, uh, most often it bores me when you have a western perspective. When you say, Waan aisa nahi hota, Arre, hum waan thodi, hum to <laughs> I, and, I, and I think, yeah, the, also let's not forget that art is self-expression as well. You know, there is nothing sacrosanct that we should not have songs. Even I have not a, not, no problem with a police inspector dancing. It's, it's fantastic art form. I mean, a police inspector dancing is, looks good. I mean, it, it looks, it could be tacky, it could be, but that's, that's how different kinds of, you know, points of views, that's why art is self-expression. There has to be, you know, this uh, one way of looking at it and saying that this is how it should be done. It's not democratic. It is dictatorial. I think we have free as a society. Please don't watch those films. Please don't dance. Please don't sing. Please, you know, but let other people do it. What's the problem with it? I don't understand. Also, on one more point, uh, since a biopic, before we close, I want to tell you that in life, there is nothing called fictional story. I have talked to many writers, there is nothing called fictional. Anything you write as a character is inspired from somewhere. Have you either, so many times people have been sued, writers, that actually this was my character and he has never mentioned it. So I think there is nothing called fictional in life. Everything comes out of some experience or the other. So this debate, anyway, biopic or non-biopic, is immaterial in that sense. There's a, there's a last question from Professor Naganer from Mysore University. Uh, it's wonderful listening to all of you. It's a great experience. My question is to Farhan. Farhan, your athleticism and your regimen have been extraordinary. And uh, so many questioners have been curious. They've expressed their... Uh, opinion about your preparation and all that. Now, after this grueling, grueling uh, regimen of an athlete, now do you keep up the same tempo or do you relax or how does your body respond now as you relax? Um, I'm, I'm not, thank you very much firstly, but I'm, I'm not maintaining the same regimen that I was maintaining during the, the preparation and the shoot of this film. It really was, like I mentioned in an earlier answer, it was an athletic lifestyle that did not allow me to do anything else apart from just live that life. Uh, I honestly, if that was the case, I probably wouldn't have been here today if I was still following the, the regimen, the diet, the fitness program, the amount of exercise that needed to be done and the amount of rest the body needs 
in between those uh, those sessions of exercise but uh, it was an amazing experience it taught me a lot it taught me about what the possibilities are um that you can push yourself to that the human being whether it's physically mentally emotionally is capable of doing anything that he or she put, puts his or her mind to so i learned a lot from it and that i think is something that will stay with me forever the last word has to come from me there is nothing wrong with police guys dancing we've had amita bachan playing vijay dancing in so many films don't say no to songs if there were no songs in hindi cinema we would not have had gulzar sahab and before i end i also should say that gulzar sahab is perhaps the only screen writer who is a regular at all book festivals and attends not just his sessions but other people's too thank you very much farhan prasoon rakesh it was wonderful talking to you uh thank you very much madam and gentlemen before you go can we just hold you back for just one minute could you maybe sign the wall here for us as a memento to the blf may i request you to sign the wall please hello for everyone who's interested in the song i'm i'm going to be back here on the 9th of october with my band so absolutely so i shall see you all then and we'll sing many many songs together yeah but not just of your own happiness you know what they say love grows when you're away but if you want okay, we'll sing go your own way <laughs> we'll sing one last song you want to sing a song dil kya kehta hai mera kya main batau tum ye samjhoge shayad main pagal hu दिल करता है टीवी टावर पे मैं चढ़ जाऊं चिल्ला चिल्ला के मैं ये सबसे कह दू है ये वक्त का इशारा हर लम्हा पुकारा यू टेम्पो इज मेजर प्रॉब्लम विद यू यू ही देखता है क्या तू जिंदगी में लगी ना दोबारा थैंक यू बाय